great. So I like to start always by giving you a little bit of introduction of why we're doing it. Well, let me just quickly get this out of the way because it will get into the way. Sorry for that. Um, so I always like to start by giving you a little bit of context while we started, and it's how the food we eat impact our planet. 90% of large fish have disappeared from the ocean due to overfishing. Three fourths of all deforestation is linked to agriculture, and one third of the global pollution is linked to the food industry. So the food industry is to blame, but it is the one that has the most opportunity for change. And why is this change going so slow? Because sustainability is bullshit. It's such a big concept in our world right now, and yet most of the time just used as a marketing tool. That's possible because us, the consumers, have no idea what is good or bad for the planet. And until now, there's never really been a way to measure sustainability. But the cool thing here is thanks to the digitalization of supply chain, this is moving super fast. We found a formula that we can help the average consumer reduce their impact up to 70%. The first thing we did is uh, creating a scanning tool where users can scan food products and see the environmental impact of the supply chain, such as CO2 emissions, effect on biodiversity loss, as well as nutritional values. If the product has a bad impact, the user receives alternatives. Then we also let the user calculate their own diet's impact and see the yearly carbon footprint, annual water usage, and annual land usage. And the cool thing here is that if the, the user will receive uh, personalized action depending on their diet. So now that we've given the user the tools, we're working on gamifying the process and making it fun for them so they can get inspired to tackle climate change. Um, we launched about six months ago and we realized one main thing. Everyone wants to be good for the planet, but convenience goes first. I always like to put myself as an example. I always like Nutella in the morning and um, the alternative has to be as tasty as Nutella if I'm going to change it. So that's how we answer the question, get asked the most, how do we plan to make money? Well, we found a way for the user, for the consumer to buy sustainable with minimal effort. With all the aggregate data we collect, such as taste and health preference from their diet, we can tailor a food basket and show how much impact they've reduced every time they buy through the app. We then charge a commission of three to 5%. And then you might ask, why would a seller uh, join this marketplace? The first thing is because they will be obliged by the European Union to provide life cycle assessment of their products by 2024. This gives us a two year head start, and um, we have all the aggregate data they need. And then the second thing is that for a sustainable seller, it's really hard to stand out between all the greenwash. I'll keep it simple for the market. 30% of European consumers deeply care about sustainability. And um, 13, there's been an increase of 13% in the last year. Now about our competitors, we like to set ourselves ni nice in the middle. Uh, we provide the efficient tech tool that the nutritional apps provide, but we also provide that emotional satisfaction of saving the planet. Um, it is very important for you to know that we don't aim just to be an app. We aim to be a movement led by the consumers on fighting climate change. A bit about our traction, we have 20 to 30 organic downloads a day, uh, 10,000 scans, and a few fun facts. We grew to 700 weekly active users in Portugal. We don't have any connection to Portugal, and we're not doing any marketing, so it's just truly really grow mouth to mouth. And we have a few uh, TikTok videos that have more than 500,000 views just explaining our product. So it's very cool to see the generation set loving, loving the solution. We have 20 to 50 returning users per day and 32% of week-on-week uh, -week retention after week four. So a bit about ourselves, we one year old, uh, one year and five months old. Um, we got finalists at Food for Future between 3,000 startups. We got invited at Benew as top eight startups. We presented even in front of the Spanish King, which was a weird experience. We also received a subsidy from the Belgian government and we are also part of the, the main accelerator in Belgium. This is our team. I always like to say that we have a very big team when there's no waves and a very small team when the nature is providing. This means that we all nature lovers, Jade is a senior consultant, and minute, Toby, left a, left, Toby left a, a big corporate to join us uh, as product manager. Then about our founding team, my co-founder, he's the accepted nerd, too smart for his own good, uh, but he's the reason why we managed to build this app and get out this far with almost no budget. Then I'm, out, I'm about to show you one of my favorite slides. I really love the face of investors when they read this. Uh, it is very important for you to know that we aim to be a unicorn startup, but we're mission driven first. And this is the amount of money that we're raising, um, mainly to improve our growth and tech team. And um, I always like to finish by saying, if you're ready to become a drifter and join this wave full of pollution, till there's no more pollution in our ocean, then you're ready to join us. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for, thanks for sharing what you guys are doing. Obviously, super early, but have some interesting organic traction and 
quite a quite something that you're trying to build. This time, this time I would kick things over to Tim first to take it away. Tim, do you have any questions for the team? Yeah, definitely. I mean, for me, uh, coming from the AI venture builder perspective, I'm obviously super curious how you guys get the data, uh, how you make mm -hmm. sure it's actually accurate, um, how like uh, what source did you get it from? Like, maybe you can walk me through that. Perfect. So um, there's two ways of collecting the data. One is that the manufacturer does a life cycle assessment of their product, which costs around 8,000 euros to do. And there's about um, four organizations in Europe that are capable of doing this um, scientific wise. And then if the manufacturer doesn't provide the, the information, then we do an estimation depending on the ingredients and origin of ingredients, as well as uh, packaging and labels. So that's the, the way we managed to scale the, the database to 2.2 million products. And um, it's it's a estimation process, but uh, quite accurate if you compare it to do uh, the life cycle assessment. And why I like this model so much is that if um, we can really push it to make it more transparent, because if the manufacturer is not happy about the result, then they just have to do the life cycle assessment, and then we'll provide the the the, the full information. All right. And are, are these uh, <clears throat> just to get it clear? So do you have to approach your manufacturers, or are these like public resources, or do you go like one by one? Um... It's, it's a consortium of different companies and we all collect the data. For example, let's say one of our users um, scanned a product not found. We request it, we add it there to the, to the database. If um, the, the manufacturer doesn't provide anything, then we do the estimation depending on the ingredients. All right, cool. And then, and then the entire ordering, so if I understood correctly, you order through the app, right, the products, and then uh, you then send the orders to the manufacturers or does it run via supermarkets or how do you do that? The, the marketplace that we're trying to create is still um, in a further stage. Right now, we only focused on, on user base. And the way we plan to do that is that the, the user buys through the app and that the operation is handled by the, by the partner, by the seller. It's a very similar model as um, Too Good To Go. I don't know if, if you ever heard about that app or Vivino as well has the, the same uh, model, business model. All right, cool. Thanks so much. Thank you. Avina, you are up next. Thanks, Jerome. I think very exciting uh, movement right there, you, you're you leading. Um, I think Tim asked about um, how you calculate the carbon, right, on, on the products. Uh, I think you showed as well in terms of carbon footprint for the customers, the people. Mm -hmm. I was wondering how uh, you do that. And then second question for me is which countries do you operate in at the moment and where are you planning to go next? Perfect. Thank you very much. So the way the user calculates their footprint is by answering a few few questions. It takes about a minute. Uh, just what type of food they eat, their diet, and um, amount of, of uh, type of food they eat per day. And then we can calculate an estimation for the whole year. We do it for carbon footprint, water usage, and land usage. And then from there on, um, we let them uh, take action. So we, we show them the products that they should change, the the recipes they can follow. And um, we, we sort of try to, to personalize their user journey on, on being better with the climate. And then the way the app already is um, in the whole Europe, the database works the most in Belgium, France, Spain, Portugal. Um, I would say um, out of five products you scanned, you will find three products. And then in other countries such as Holland, UK, um, and a bit more of the Nordic countries, um, it works a bit worse. There's about maybe two out of five products you can scan. Okay, interesting. So, Follow-up question on the water and land usage. Uh, what kind of questions do you ask to calculate the water and land usage and kind of how to mitigate or reduce the climate impact from there? So um, the questions that get asked is how many, how many, how much meat do you eat a day? How much chicken do you eat a day? It's just a couple of questions of the diet. And then from there on, we, we go look into, into the database that has all the ingredients and, um, and then uh, make an estimation from there. Okay, got it. Matthias? Yeah, Jerome, thank you. Two questions from, from my side, and I asked both at the beginning. Um, first, I did not fully understand how you get paid. You mentioned the 3 to 5% commission. So uh, let's assume I use your app. I like, I really like Nutella, but your app tells me don't buy Nutella, Matthias, buy Apple from the local farmer's market instead. 
let's assume I do that. How do you get your three to five percent? And it's three to five percent on what? And second question, I download your app, I use it once, and then I lose interest. How do you make sure that this does not happen? Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll start with the first one. So the, the user journey will be that you, since we know all your information, we'll tell you, look, this is what you, you want to buy. We'll change it to this alternatives. And this is how much CO2 emissions you will reduce, how much water footprint you, you would have in, in land usage. And the way we collaborate with our partners is that um, with local partners, let's say um, the way we, we are planning to do is with, with Belgium, collaborate with uh, Peter Pot. I don't know if you ever heard about them. It's uh, sort of a gorillas, but without plastic. And it's about um, redirecting them to, to, to the seller. So it's just a marketplace. We just charge a market fee, which is a five, two to 5% commission. And then the, the logistics and all the operations behind it is by done by the partner. So um, we just make a food basket for you. We'll show you how much CO2 emissions you've reduced just by switching to a few alternatives and then, um, and then let you buy it through the app. And then, uh, sorry. Is there potentially a kind of climate conflict if I go to the store to buy something and I see something and scan it and then it says, actually, no, it's more climate efficient for us to ship this from some warehouse that's not right where you are already. Mm -hmm. Does that potentially have an actual worse com consequences? Yeah, I, it's it will be hard to do this with the, the current database that we have um, and the, the, the logistics behind it. I mean, it, it's not, I don't really see it feasible that one specific product that you will buy through the app, it's more about the whole, the whole food basket. So um, it will be more about showing how, what do you buy uh, at the supermarket? And then we show you how, what you can change in a whole, not just product by product. I don't know if that, that answers your question. So is the use case that I go to the store and fill out my basket and then scan everything? Or is the use case I go to the store and I'm not sure about something and I scan a product. So that, that's the that's a utility on the app, but that's not where we're going to um, earn the money from. It will be um, from personalizing and recommending what you should buy for next week. So with the recipes you follow, the, the engagement you had through the app, we can personalize and recommend you what products you should buy, and then you buy it through the app. But like, for example, if you scan a food product at the supermarket, we'll just show you the impact and the alternatives that are the best in your region but that's not where you're going to um, buy the product through. It will be through through the whole engagement process of um, knowing what you like and what you don't like. I feel like you have to do a lot of retrofitting to find a way to have a business model that works there instead of going more for the functionality of what you're trying to accomplish, which is helping consumers reduce mm -hmm. and then having potentially a different business. I mean, a different business model potentially just as a thought could be you're an affiliate for whichever of the, whichever of the um, grocery deliveries or grocery uh, kind of made for you meal kits are the most efficient, and you're just substituting for set things as opposed to having different retailers in different places you have to work with. It seems, it seems I don't know if I'm the only one who thinks that. It seems kind of like trying to duct tape a business model onto a different business or product. Yeah, we we looked at. Um at different types of business models, like such as subscriptions and, and um, more, more simple type of business models. But at the end, the, the mission and the goal is to, to help consumers buy with minimal effort. And it's really about uh, your health and taste preference that goes first when you're going to decide to buy sustainable. So it's really the goal that you will be able to buy everything without having to worry that it's sustainable or not. You just focus on your taste and health and we make sure that you you've got a, the most sustainable possible for, for your taste and health preference to the app. So that's, it's the business model that's most aligned to, to our mission, but it's true. It will take, it will take, it's more complex than, than um, focusing on something more, more of a simple business model. I understood. Could also look at freemium and then having a pro version where you have nutrition tips and other things mm -hmm. built in just as a, just as a possibility. Yeah, yeah, someone else someone else is posting in the in the chat as well. They're not sure three to five percent of a take is gonna be enough for a real business in a marketplace that has payment gateway fees, et cetera. Yeah. We we tend to 
charge three to five percent to the to the partner and then a small flat fee to the to the consumer as well so at the end it will be around nine nine point five percent uh gross margin if you look at uh too good to go which does a similar business model they have around five to fifteen percent um business model and at the end for us it will be really depending on on the partner if it's going to be a local market then we have to adapt our commission to them if it's going to be a huge retailer which uh, commissions are, are are much smaller then we have to adapt to them as well too good to go is a little different as well though because that's bringing in supplementary income they wouldn't already have these are products that they could normally sell in the store they can't sell in the store then this mm -hmm. is too good to go is food that they're, they're not allowed to sell anymore just just as food food for thought so to speak yeah mm -hmm. i think that <clears throat> sorry Sorry, um, I think like what to, to go to go doesn't have what you guys are kind of building is like the potential uh, for like a viral product and thereby the data access to what does Gen Z actually buy? Um, what are their buying habits and where are they looking for alternatives? And so <clears throat> maybe it's like a data play where you give them insights. Maybe it's uh, uh, actually the actual ordering. But I think uh, if you manage to build that viral product, then I'm sure that eventually you'll nail uh, your business model. Like if you just stick close to these companies, the retailers, the, the manufacturers, and you find kind of what they're looking for, like data-wise, I'm sure that um, there's a, mm -hmm. just like food, food for thought, um, I'm sure there's a, a really good case. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's that's what we really focused on, on, on really satisfying the user needs and, and user base on creating that viral product, which we're kind of slowly seeing great progress on mm -hmm. because hey, we're really solving a problem. Amen. I would keep it free as long as you can and just get data and grow because you don't need the money and the money's going to be meaningless at the at the beginning with how much you would make in transactions anyways. Yeah. Maybe eventually it becomes this white label for retailers that uh, you know, like other build like these uh, B2B SaaS tools for banks where you can calculate your footprint based mm -hmm. on your purchases. Um, they also collect a bunch of data, they kind of build the tech infrastructure. Maybe that's something, but yeah, uh, I'm sure there's there's a there's a good model there. Mm-hmm. Or they can show you what you would save in climate savings plus price if you swapped it for the store brand as opposed to the name brand or all kinds of other cool little features.